Hi guys, my name is Francesca, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is definitely going to be a spoiler-free review, so if you have not read the book yet, you can totally stay and hear me try to convince you to pick this book up as soon as you can, because it's a good book. I'm also going to comment on the TV show because it was the TV show that convinced me to read the book because at first I was told that this book was like Twilight and that kind of put me off for a long time but then the TV show came out and it had Matthew Good and Teresa Palmer and I loved them so much and I loved the first episode and I kept going and I kept loving it and I was like, you know what, I'm going to check out this series as well and let me tell you, this is nothing like Twilight. There are vampires, yes, but that doesn't mean that all books with vampires are Twilight ripoff. So, let me give you a little bit of a synopsis here so you guys can understand what we're talking about. The main protagonist of this book is Diana Bishop. She is an historian and she's also a visiting professor at Oxford because she's doing some research for a paper that she's writing on alchemy and she needs to do some research in the Bodleian Library at Oxford. She is also a witch, but because of an accident that happened when she was little and that killed her parents, she has sworn off witchcraft and magic and she wants nothing to do with her coven or with other magical creatures such as vampires and demons. So one day while she's doing her research, she requests a text the Ashmole Manuscript 782, but as soon as she has it in her hands, she realizes that a spell has been cast on that manuscript. She immediately gives it back to the library because she wants nothing to do with magic and she doesn't want to use magic in her research, but from that moment on, she notices creatures following her around, creatures that are interested in that manuscript and that have been looking for it for centuries. Particularly among those creatures, there's the vampire Matthew de Clermont. He's looking for that manuscript because he believes that in it there are secrets regarding the origins of witches, vampires and demons and he wants to use that knowledge to try and save the creatures because they're kind of starting to get extinct. From what little I've said so far, I think you guys can see that this is not your typical paranormal book. Of course there is a love story and of course it takes up a huge part of the book because different creatures cannot mix, witches cannot be with vampires, therefore Diana and Matthew's love is kind of a forbidden love story, but that's just a part of it. There's also so much more going on. For instance, what I am personally interested in besides the love story because it is a good love story but what I'm interested in is discovering what the origin of the creatures is and how they can save them, how they can prevent them from becoming extinct and there is just so much academia in this book. There's a lot about genetics because Matthew is a biochemist, I think, and he's doing experiments on blood samples and he is studying lineages and how some magical traits are passed on from generation to generation. There's also a lot about alchemy and about religion and about Bible studies and there's also so much about literature and history history because both Matthew and Diana are history buffs and you have Matthew that has lived for centuries so of course he's going to give to Diana some tidbits of history here and there. So there's just so much going on, so much culture within the pages of this book. The author definitely did her research when it came to the customs and the clothes of the past, quotes and references and past philosophers and authors authors and also in her descriptions, in the way she described the Bodleian Library, in the way she describes Oxford, she talks about how manuscripts and books were made in the 16th and 17th century. There's so much knowledge within these pages that I could not help but be impressed. Of course, the consequence of that will be the book being a little bit slower 
than other books within the same genre because there's a lot about history and science, many descriptions, which I didn't mind at all because I thought that he created the perfect atmosphere for this book and I wouldn't have cut anything out, like I wouldn't have edited anything. It was perfect to me, but to some people it might seem slightly slower. It wasn't to me. There are also many scenes that I absolutely adore. You know those scenes where you have the whole cast of characters gathered in the same room and they're bantering and talking over one another and just it's a mess and I just love it so so much and there are so many scenes of that kind in this book and I just love them so so much and it's very realistic in more ways than I was expecting because in this book you actually have characters that once in a while have to go to the bathroom, that once in a while have to take a shower. Diana gets her period. Guess what? Women have menstruations. That's something that happens. It's in, you know, the human and which is nature. That is not magic. That happens once every month. Also, and this is something that I personally love, and I just want to address one issue that sometimes people have with this book, and it is the overprotectiveness of Matthew towards Diana. Now, I don't think he was excessively overprotective. Yes, there were times when he followed her around. Yes, there were times when he took control of the situation. Yes, there were times when he told her what to do. But I have two arguments against that. The first one is, it's kind of part of his nature. We're not just talking about any man. We're talking about a vampire and in this book there's a metaphor between vampires and the pack behavior of wolves, how there's the alpha, how wolves are protective of their females and of their territory and so on. It's like mothers being protective of their child. It's something that it is within you and you can try to dampen it a little bit but it's still there and he tries his best to not let it be too much. It's not like one day he wakes up and he becomes this controlling monster and he doesn't let her do anything. It's not what happens. He tells her up front before they get into anything that she has to be aware of the fact that that is how vampires are and even though he'll try to do his best to not be too overprotective, he is still going to have that attitude, that kind of behavior most of the times. And she tells him that she's fine with it. And that is my second argument right there. There is consent, okay? She tells him that it's fine. And not because she is a victim in this unhealthy, abusive relationship. She understands that at the time she's in danger and that's his way of making sure that she's safe. He doesn't tell her that she cannot go running in the mornings. He doesn't tell her that she cannot go out. He just makes sure that she is always in the safest environment possible to do whatever she wants to do. In fact, Diana is quite the stubborn and strong-willed woman and she doesn't always do what Matthew tells her to do and as we go along Along in the book as she learns to control her magic and her power and as she learns to defend herself he becomes less and less protective so yeah don't give me that overprotective bullshit okay future Franny would really love to kick in the butt past Franny because she totally forgot to say something that I think is worth mentioning and it is how in this book the author reinterprets and sheds some light on stereotypes about witches and vampires and demons like she takes those stereotypes and she gives an original explanation for them for instance Matthew explains to Diana why we humans believe that garlic keeps vampires away or where we got the idea that vampires cannot walk in the light and I just loved it okay back to past Franny I don't have much to say about the TV show to be honest apart from the fact that it was absolutely freaking-tastic. The actors were amazing, the cinematography was just 
breathtaking and mind-blowing and the first season follows the events of the first book and it was quite faithful to the book. Reading the book actually made me pay more attention to some details that were present in the TV show but they weren't quite explained even though they were there. For example, in the TV show you see Diana running and rowing every morning but it's only in the book that you find out why those activities are that important for her. So you get that in the TV show but it's not well explained as in the book. And perhaps in the TV show there was more insight about some characters that I think we'll get to know more in the other books. This first book focuses more on witches and vampires, but there was less about demons and I'm very curious to learn more about demons, so I hope that that's coming in the sequels. The diversity representation was on point both in the TV show and in the books, so that made me very happy as well. I cannot wait to see what's in store for me in the sequels, what's gonna happen next. I'm just so excited and I'm so happy that the TV show has been confirmed for a second and third season. That's just amazing! I cannot wait, I'm so excited. This is it for this video. Please let me know in the comments if you have read these books, if you want to, if you have watched the TV show. Let me know in the comments because you guys know that I love talking to you and I'll see you soon tomorrow with another video. Warm hugs.